welcome back to Jordan's Everyday DIY. So today we are going to show you how to make your own cornhole board and bags. Um, I think we've learned a few lessons along the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we actually never really played cornhole much before. So um, by making our first ones, uh, we've learned some things that we won't do on our second one, but it still is a really fun project and we're excited to show you how we do it. So subscribe if you like the videos that we do. Today, we're gonna to have a fun project in store. Today, we're gonna to make a cornhole game set. Seems to be a very popular game anymore. We just rented a house on vacation a few weeks ago. Friends and family came up, played a lot of cornhole because they had a set there at the house. So we thought, you know what? That would be a fun project to show here on Jordan's Everyday DIY. So I'll go online, find some diagrams, I looked at a lot of them online. There's some variation. The only thing that doesn't vary in these games is the size of the board. The board is two foot wide by four foot long, and it has a six inch diameter hole located in it that comes in nine inches from the end and is centered on the two foot dimension. One of the variations that you'll find is some variation in thicknesses, things like that, variation in material. I'm going to use a three quarter inch thick plywood today so that I don't need any intermittent bracing for structure. Three quarter inches should be plenty stable enough. And I'm gonna go with a four inch high rib on it, just again, for a little bit more strength. So uh, we'll create some two by four uh, folding legs on the end uh, that'll hold that at that 12 inch uh, dimension, which is also a critical dimension to the game. So we'll get these built up. Melissa's gonna paint them, do some vinyl work or something, I think from her silhouette on there, which we'll show in the video. And I think she's gonna make, uh, make up some bean bags for this as well. So. Let's get this wood laid out and we'll start putting this together. All right, so I've got all my wood cut. What I've done is I've cut my two foot by four foot uh, face panels, uh, cut my side plates um, out of the three quarter as well. But as I was going through this, I was thinking a little bit, I had a few leftover pieces of some outdoor uh, decking materials. So this is just five quarter decking. I went ahead and ripped one inch square um, blocks out of this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna attach these. I'm gonna glue them and just kind of finish nail them, just tack them in uh, for that glue to set. And I'll come back with some uh, drywall screws, countersink these from the underside of the board. And then I'll attach my sides to the sides of these pieces of wood. The reason being is, as I got to thinking about it, I know that you can attach everything from the top surface, but when you do that, um, you, you are creating, you know, kind of a void on the top surface. You can come back, fill it, smooth it off, paint it, all that stuff. Still have a pretty good surface. I just decided I didn't want to disturb that face so that it's nice and smooth when I give these over to Melissa and she starts painting these and prepping them for the game. So I'm going to attach everything kind of from the underside or the sides. So that's what you'll see me doing here. So you saw that I got the blocking mounted to the back side of the board. What I'm going to do now is on my sides, I'm going to go along and I'm going to make some straight lines uh, so that I know that I'm coming up exactly one half inch into those blocks. So set my square here at one half inch because those are an inch thick and I'll make some lines on my sides. Okay. So I got all my lines drawn and my holes uh, countersunk for the sides. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go along, I'm gonna glue these as well, clamp them in place, get them screwed in and frame this thing out. After this, we'll get the hole drilled and get the legs made. We have the main bodies made. So what I wanna do now is I wanna mark out for this hole. And if you recall over on the board, I showed you that it's nine inches from the top edge and it's centered on the uh, 24 inch width of the board. So we're gonna come down nine inches, which I've already set my square at, make a mark, and we're gonna come off uh, 12 inches. All right, so since I'm short, I'm gonna put this on the floor so I can get some leverage on that bad boy because that thing's gonna grab, as you can imagine, six inch hole saw wood. 
First, I'm going to drill a pilot hole. That way I can line that up a little easier, and then we'll get that cut out. All right, now that I've got the hole cut out, I'm going to go along this on the outside, on the diameter of this hole or circumference of this hole, on the edges and stuff, just with a simple roundover bit and a trimmer, get this kind of cleaned up a little bit, do some sanding on it, get it nice and smooth, and then we'll work on the legs. some two by four. However, inside, since my sides here uh, overall are four inches, so the sides that I cut are three and a quarter because I have three quarter inch top. I have one inch block inside, so really on the inside of this, so that these fold flat, I just needed a two and a quarter uh, thick piece of wood. So I ripped down some two by fours. I happen to have a piece. Came up with a little template so that I can uh, trace this radius, put it on this leg. I'm gonna drill these out, mount this about three quarters of an inch or so. I use a spacer on here, you can see that. I'll space that off there a little bit so that it folds. And that way, the radius allows it to close. The flat allows it to sit flat on there, and this corner doesn't hit this back side, so I'm just spacing it off about three quarters of an inch, which is plenty. So that when this is in position and it's all the way open, this is a total of 12 inches from the ground. So I'm gonna get the rest of these cut, take them over here on the bandsaw, cut a little radius, sand them off a little bit, get these ready, we'll get them drilled out, get some hardware, and get them mounted, and this bad boy is ready for paint. My job is done. got the legs made got the hardware ready so what I want to do now is I'm going to take a couple of shims I've got a about a sixteenth of an inch or so here piece of laminate that I want to lay in here that my leg is going to set on top of I just want just a little bit of clearance so as this thing closes opens and closes it's not uh, not too tight then as I mentioned before I'm going to space it off the end about three quarters of an inch so that it also allows the leg to, uh, to close. I also did just take and put a slight angle, about nine degrees, roughly, since I'm coming off three quarters of an inch, to this end as it sets uh, flat on the ground once it's in the open position. So I'm gonna get this clamped in place. I've got a mark here, I'll tell you. Clamp that in. I came down, this is two and a quarter thick inside um, the space I'm working with, so I came down one and one eighth inch, and I happened to come in two and five eighths, which is to the center of this leg. Got some five sixteen cents hardware. Probably should have my glasses on. open position should be 12 inches on the money so I'll get those other two done get these over to Melissa I think she's gonna come out and do some painting we'll go check on her now and we'll see how she's doing on those bean bags Okay, so I have all of the bags sewn now. What I did was cut these out seven by seven, and then you sew the right sides together. This is duck cloth. And I went around and did a double um, 
sewing here just to make sure that you don't want the corn to fall out. And then you just wanna leave a little bit of room up here at the top and that is where I am going to turn this bag out and also where we can put the corn in. But first I just wanna go and cut all these edges or corners just so when I flip it back, it will make a nice corner. And now I am just going to turn this inside out. Okay, I'm gonna take these over and iron them, and then I'm gonna show you how we measured the corn and filled these up. Okay, so I have the bag filled and just a few things about these bags. Um, you want to make sure that if you want to do a regulation cornhole game, they suggest that you use this duck cloth. And to be quite honest, it is a little bit hard to sew if you are not familiar with sewing. I used to sew quite often and honestly my machine broke about five years ago and so I have had a day <laughs> trying to get these sewn. So a few things that I learned um, in the instructions that I found, it said to leave a half inch seam all the way around and when you're finished, you're supposed to have a six by six square and I had a five and a half um, square. So what I did was I, I re, um, I had to re-sew, Brett cut these out again for me, the squares, and I just did a quarter inch seam. So I don't know why that didn't work for me, um, but this seemed to work perfect. When I did the quarter inch seam, my squares ended up being a six by six. So that's something to keep in mind. Another thing is um, when you're filling it, we just used a scale and a measuring cup. And what you do is you measure your bag first, and then you just subtract that from the amount of corn that you need to fill. So you can see that my bag is already filled up. And now I'm gonna go over to the machine and finish sewing these up and we will be all ready to play. All right, and then this is what it looks like. Now I have three more to go. Okay, so I, with the help of Brett, we just put our vinyl down on the cornhole board and we're using this as a stencil. And so we are gonna show you how we did this and take you step by step on the second one. Okay, so what we've decided to do is take this two inch um, painter's tape and I'm gonna go ahead and tape around the perimeter. I already put three coats of a semi-gloss outdoor white paint on first. Okay, now what we're going to do to get the name nice and straight, what we did is we took a straight edge, took it about an eighth of an inch or so, a little less, off the bottom line of the vinyl that we cut so we get a nice straight line. The spacing that Melissa liked off of this border that she's going to paint happened to be about another two inches. So it was real simple to take another two inch piece of blue painter's tape, put it on here on the bottom. You don't have to stick it down real good. And what we'll do is we'll make a center line mark on the tape where we have a center line mark on this and pretty much just butt this up next to it. And when we stick it down, it'll be nice and straight with the border. It's a lot easier to do with two people laying the vinyl to try to keep uh, the air bubbles from accumulating underneath. So um, we'll get some measurements now for the J, which is not a symmetrical letter. 
Um, so we found a spot on the other one that we happened to like the orientation instead of centering it on the J, it would be so off center on the board as opposed to like a letter M or something like that. So we found some measurements that we like. We'll get those marked off on here now and then we'll get the J mounted. So there you go, there's our stencil. We'll put one more donut one around the hole here that we'll show you, which will just give a border around the cornhole hole. And uh, Melissa will then get this painted. All right, there you have it. Got them all stenciled. Melissa's gonna get these painted up. We'll be playing cornhole before you know it. Okay, so one thing that I have learned when using this painter's tape for a straight line, especially with using darker colors like black, that's what we're gonna do this inside panel with. Um, no matter how hard you try to stick this tape down, it's always gonna bleed a little bit. So a way to prevent that is to go in with the color. Um, in this case, it's white that I just painted and just paint over your lines seals the tape line. And it seals the tape line. <laughs> with my first coat. It definitely is going to need two, um, but I just wanted to share, I am using these fabric mini rollers and this is good for semi-gloss paint. So whenever you're painting, you always want to make sure that um, you figure out what surface you're going to be rolling on and then what type of paint you're using. So as soon as these dry, I will come back and do a second coat. Anyways, we got it painted. What I did afterwards, and I'll show a picture, is we Cleared it with a uh, polyacrylic spray clear. Uh, I put one coat on, lightly sanded. I'm, by lightly sanded, I mean just kind of scuffed with a 320. Put another coat on, and it's kind of a nice smooth finish now over this paint. Uh, what I want to show you today is kind of the storage. For me, this was all about storage and moving this thing around. Uh, I think we mentioned the house we rented uh, up north a while ago had one of these games, just individual boards. And they were just kind of, uh, I don't want to say cumbersome, but kind of cumbersome to move around, right? They stored them in the house, they were individual boards, the bags were separate. Uh, so I kind of came up with my own suggestion or ideas on how I was going to uh, actually fasten these two, uh, move these two, and store these two. So I'm going to get the camera, uh, move it up here a little closer, spin one of these around, show you what I did here, and then we'll get it hung up uh, in our pool shed. Okay, so I'll try to hold the phone steady here. So what I've done here is put these back to back. I wanna show you a couple little things that I did here. I made four locations where I made kind of this little keyway um, lock in place position on these boards. It's two on each side. So this can only go together one way and that'll keep the panels when I lock them together from sliding. We purchased um, relatively inexpensive actually on Amazon, these little rubber uh, clinch hooks to hold these together. There's four, two on each side. And then I will show you, I installed on the back side there, you can see through the crack, um, some kayak handles to allow us to transport these. So what I'll do is I'll fasten these together. I'll show you that in a second and then we can carry them around utilizing the handles. And then I'll show you the hook design I came up with that I'm gonna mount inside the pool shed for storage. The bean bags will actually just go inside the holes and store inside these when they're together. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my best to show you how these go together. Basically, you can almost hinge it just like I had it. Those keyways lock together. Just lock in place in four positions, like I mentioned. Kayak 
handles and it's all in one place. So I purchased a ladder bracket is all this is. You can get it at any Home Depot Ace. Um, happen to have a uh, old swim or pool noodle that I cut for padding. Basically uh, slice those off kind of flat to create an eight inch opening. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount this inside our pool shed. Then I'll bring this unit in there and this just hangs on like this. I just put the padding on the front and the back here and here just to stop from scratching up the paint. But basically this will just hang in the pool shed just like this. Again, bean bags inside. So for me, again, it was kind of about what we we're gonna do with these things when we're done, where we're gonna store them. That's where we're gonna put them. So I'll get this mounted and I'll show you these hanging up in the shed. All right, well, there you have it. Cornhole games, ready to play. 27 feet apart, ready to throw. I can't do it. Just a little short. <laughs>